start us off. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate it. Um, hey, man, how's it going? Um, hey, I just, I know you guys get everybody's best shot and, and the, you always pack the arenas on the road, but wondering if you've watched some Arkansas's game like against Auburn and Tennessee, they had pretty rapid crowds. Kind of, kind of what are you guys expecting? And what, what's, and I guess are you guys pr pr uh, pretty used to that on the road now? Uh, I'd say we're pretty accustomed to it at this point on the road. Um, you know, that's been the story of, of Kentucky basketball traveling in the SEC for for years now. So, um, you know, we got a glimpse of of, of the Auburn game and, and, and we've seen some tape on them. And uh, we expect it to be an electric environment and um, a sold out crowd with, with a ton of students and, and a lot of enthusiasm. So uh, the good thing is we're we're prepared for that. We've we've faced that. Um, and we've got some some good experience with that. So we're looking forward to the challenge, I'd say. Thank, thank you. Sure. John Hale? Kellen, whenever Stavir and Tai Tai do come back, what did you guys learn the last two games that can help you when you are full strength? Uh, I mean, we, we've showed that we can find ways to be productive and, and win without those guys. Um, so when we're able to get them back, uh, it, that would just add, add to our team and, and make us even better. I mean, for most of the season, we've had those two guys and we've been, uh, evidently a, a very, very good team. And in you know, the last two games, we, we had to show some, some toughness and, and some real resilience, especially coming from behind in, in both of those games and, and find different ways to, uh, to score points and then get in the lane. Um, and collectively, I think we've done a, a really good job stepping up. Um, so we're excited about having our, our full unit together again. Very yeah, Kellen, I hope I can ask too. Uh, how did your role change, if at all, with Tai Tai and Xavier not available? Well, it definitely changed. Uh, I'm not sprinting to the corner. I'm having to, uh, and then playing off those guys. I'm having to initiate a lot of the offense and, and, and get the ball over half court and, and let us play um, from there. And uh, on defense, I'm, I'm guarding the one or the two as opposed to the, the two or the three. Um, so it, it, it's been, it's definitely been different the last couple of games, a bit of an adjustment. Um, but, you know, we had, someone had to have stepped up and, uh, th those, those duties were left to, to Davion and I, and, um, uh, you know, thankfully we were able to come out victorious the last two games. Was that, uh, just to follow up on that, was that a good thing to change things up? You know what I mean? Kind of as a refreshing sort of thing, or would you rather kind of have that definite role and just keep working on perfecting that? Uh, well, I'd say we did what we did the last two games at, at a necessity. I think it's pretty clear when those two um, are playing that uh, I will not be playing point guard. Um, and, I mean, there, there's perks to both sides. Uh, you know, I was able to get in the paint. Um, a little more and, and throw some lobs, get get to my floaters and, and get all the way to the rim sometimes, which is something I don't necessarily do as much um, when those two are in the game. Um, but like I said, I, I think that it was out of necessity the last couple of games. And when we get our full team back and uh, I'm playing uh, my role and perhaps with a, with a couple more drives per game, just getting that experience the last couple of games and, and getting in the paint. Uh, I think it can only help us, but uh, I like I like my role. Daryl Bird. Yeah, Kellen. Um, Bryce came on big the other day, and Damian before that. How I don't know if you've ever had to go through that much, but how hard is it to sit there and wait your turn, game after game, and keep yourself up and ready? It's an incredibly challenging, uh, especially given. What are we, 27, 28 games into the year? Yeah. Um, and 
we were shorthanded and, and, and Bryce had an opportunity and he uh, took advantage of it incredibly well. It was uh, uber, uber productive for us. And, and uh, it started with, with the little things. You know, he got some offensive rebounds. He um, got to see the ball going a couple of times at the free throw line and then it opened up the rest of his game. So, I mean, he was sensational for us the other night. Uh, I think he was a difference in the game. I think without Bryce's spark, we may not have won that game. So uh, just credit to Bryce for for being patient, for understanding that um, this, this is a team and, and Cal puts the five guys on the court that will fight. Um, and he, he definitely was, was one of those guys on, on goodness, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Yeah. Um, so he was awesome. And then Damian... At Alabama, I think he was he only played nine or ten minutes, but he he was also a huge difference maker in the game. So uh, I think a lot of that also has to do with the way we practice. We keep an emphasis on all of our all of our guys, not just the guys starting and playing a lot of minutes. And everyone is continuously held accountable. And, and when your opportunity presents itself, it's uh, there is an opportunity there to take advantage of it. And, and Bryce and Damian have, have definitely done that. And, and so is Dante when we played Mississippi State. I mean, he was awesome in that game and made some big plays. So we've seen time and time again that that guys have, have the willingness and, and the preparation to step up when a number is called. Tyler Thompson. So Kellen, you know, senior day is coming up on Tuesday. And in your college career, you've had the opportunity to play for two great coaches and Bob McKillop and John Calipari. I was wondering if you could compare their coaching styles and maybe tell us what the most valuable lessons you learned from them are. Putting me on the spot here, huh? Um, they, they definitely uh, have different coaching styles. Uh, Coach McKillop's run a, a system-oriented offense with, with principles for – 33 years and he's had a lot of success with it. Um, credit to how well Davidson's doing this year as, as well. Um, and uh, Coach Cal is, he's got his style. It's more dribble drive oriented players making plays. Um, but the, the exceptional thing about both of them is, is they have a standard and there's no shortcutting that standard and you're always going to be held to account no matter if you're the, Number one on the depth chart, or you're, you're the uh, you're the thirteenth guy, and I think that's what's allowed them to both be successful and coach three decades in the sport at the college level. Um, I mean, I, I've learned a lot of lessons from from both of them, uh, just in, in my time at Davidson and in my time here. So I I'm not going to try to pinpoint one and potentially leave out a better lesson, but uh, Playing for both both of these coaches has been a, a wonderful experience for me, and I've learned a lot. I've learned how to be held accountable, uh, how to how to fulfill a, a discipline oriented coach's uh, wishes and tasks, and, and I've been very grateful. I think. John Wong, Kellen, Coach Cal always talks about doing the little things right. And one of the big things with you is, is shooting and making shots. But what are some of the little things that we need to be looking for that uh, maybe you've, uh, you feel the most proud that you've been able to accomplish this year? I think uh, I've, I've defended well this year um, in most games. And I think a, a, a little thing that sometimes goes unnoticed is uh, – I, th I think my being in the right spot on defense has allowed me to avoid foul trouble and, and, and foul at a really low rate, which uh, allows me to stay on the court. Um, and I, I think another thing is I, I try to, you mentioned the details, I try to be pretty detail oriented and, and simply just do what's asked of me, whether that's making open shots or, or making the next pass or um, helping on a, on a, on a defensive assignment, I, I, I try to do the little things. And do the little things, you tend to stay on the court um, because then you become trustworthy and you don't, you don't piss off coach. So that's always, that's always good. Jeff German. 
Yeah, uh, Kellen, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but I'm, I'm wondering about the uh, process of uh, playing without uh, Severe and Ty Ty and how it's helped you um, to, to maybe have your kind of offensive game you expect to have, even if the three-point shot is not part of it. And if, if there's something of value there, you know, going into the tournament where you may face some opponents who can kind of run you off the three-point line at times. Yeah, well, without those, without Xavier and Titan in the game, it puts pressure on uh, us as guards to, you got, someone's got to make plays and someone's got to get in the paint and, or someone's got to start the dribble drive by making the right pass uh, to allow the next, the next guy to drive. And um, LSU did a, I said a couple of times now, LSU did a, a really good job, I thought, uh, of limiting my, my three-point looks and, and running me off the line. Um, but when the ball's in your hands more, that, that gives you opportunities to, to either uh, let them work harder than you and, and keep you from getting shots off or take advantage of those and drive those hard closeouts and get in the paint and shoot some floaters, uh, throw some lobs, or, or get all the way to the rim. So um, just the opportunity and, and – and having the ball more, uh, I think, provided those opportunities and kept me from um, – kept an off-shooting night from, from allowing me to, to kind of just get lost in the game. So, um, again, it's, it's been that it's been out of necessity, and then uh, we've had to step up, so. Three more. Christos, John, and Jerry. Get your in here. Hey, Kellen, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you compare yourself with, from the beginning of the season until now, what did you see as the biggest growth on your game and how this process and uh, to be in crunch time to take more responsibilities help you to get a winning mentality as a player? Uh, I'd say the the nickname I earned about a couple of weeks ago, Steady Eddie, has been my, my biggest... Um, I guess improvement is I think for the most part, you know what you're going to get from me. And I've been relatively consistent where I think in non-conference in, in November, December, um, it was a little up in the air. Uh, and I, th I think that that's allowed us to, to be a better team. And it's, it's given me the confidence to, to go out and, and, and play my role every, every day and um, just do what I can to help us win. John, go ahead. Well, and obviously you've got another game before then, but can you just compare a little bit the emotions of going through a senior day at Davidson after four years versus going through one here after one year? It's, it's obviously a different situation, but something we're seeing more of in this stage of the transfer portal. Yeah, my second senior night. How about that? Um, it, it, there's obviously a, a huge difference, and you, you go through four years at a, at, at a college and, and different rosters, different – you've played – multiple you go through multiple senior nights you you have different senior leaders for three out of your four years at, at, at a school where you're where you're at for four years like like I did at Davidson um we had we had uh, a bunch of we had a couple 21 seasons we had one just over 500 we had a, a season plagued by a pandemic and and uh you know I, I, we went through a lot as as a group at, at Davidson and um so there's a little bit of a different level of appreciation just because you have four years of experience and you play with multiple teammates, uh, some, some new assistants, et cetera. But uh, ultimately, it's going to be just as um, as meaningful um, this Tuesday. You know, this has been an exceptional year for us. We, we've, we've cracked the top five. We've had a lot of success. We've had some statement wins. Uh, and, and you're playing on the biggest stage of college basketball at, at a blue blood. So, you know, one, I'm, I'm grateful to be here, and uh, I'm definitely excited about having a senior night in Rupp and experiencing that with my parents and um, doing it at a place like Kentucky. Jerry, finish us off. Yeah, Kellen, I'm going to remember the importance of not pissing off the coach, by the way. Uh, Arkansas's big guy has a knack for taking charges. How does that play in, on, on the players' minds and the planning for the game? <laughs> well, the good thing about us is we shoot a lot of floaters. And, um, you know, frankly, now if I really think about it, how many charges have been called against us this year? 
uh, I think very, very few. We we're, we're trained to to uh, there's a layup, there's a layup, and you and you get all the way to the rim and shoot the layup. If not, we a lot of us shoot floaters, and if the big helps up and they negate the floater, then we throw up to the rim and we have we have lob finishers. So uh, it's definitely something to be cognizant of, uh, but I wouldn't say it's something that's we're gonna drill heavily uh, to avoid or, or, or harp on beyond um, just simply being aware of it. Well, thank you so much for your time, Kellen. We'll have coaching here in just a minute.